All right, so today we're going to go ahead and change the thermostat. I got uh, this little Murray thermostat here, part number 71980. I'll put a link right up here if you need one. It's not too bad of a gig. Uh, the problem with this one is the thermostat is, thermostat is stuck open. It's throwing a code. I can't remember what it is, but it's basically saying that like the temperature is not getting to operating temperature quickly. Um, so yeah that's that uh they also had an issue where they didn't have a band clamp on this like return line here off the radiator that was weird so it was leaking slightly right there um got that fixed up but for now we're gonna get in here and get this thermostat changed so step number one it looks like we're gonna pull this cover so will that fit around that now we're gonna take the oil fill cap off bam and then we're gonna just pop this puppy up uh. Come on, baby. There we go. That's good. Grommet's awesome. So it just lifts straight up front and back. All right, so with the cover, you just pull up on the front and the back, and it comes right off. Uh, so we got that gone. So the thermostat is actually down here on the driver's side underneath this little, like, plastic cover for this fuel system. So we're going to end up having to pull this air duct in this plastic cover to get down to the housing. Um, but first things first, we're gonna slide underneath the front here and we're going to partially drain the coolant. And then uh, we will get to removing things. All right, here we are back top side. So I got the little breather off. The only thing on here other than the hose clamps is this PCV line. Uh, so you kind of just want to gently squeeze this little white tab down here. Um, you basically just press this and carefully jiggle it to get it off if you want to get it off at this end that's onto the neck or you can pull this end off which is just press to fit down here on this connection and just let it ride with it um, now we're down to this cover so it looks like we got a 10 mil there so I'm going to pop that out and then we're going to see what it takes to work this cover off alright this cover was as simple as that you take out the 10 millimeter that was right here and then the whole thing will just jiggle gently work its way out so here we are we've exposed the thermostat housing it's down yonder looks like it's held on with three 10 millimeter bolts so we got here here and here um there are quite a few hoses coming off of this thing but they have quick connects on them um but they are rubber so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this hose off on the front side here. And then we are going to unbolt the thermostat and try and wiggle it out with those hoses still attached. We'll just pull it back and then slip out the old thermostat and try and slip in the new one with the new gasket. So let me get this hose off down here, see how much coolant still left in the system. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right. So you see, we've got the hose clamp locked out removed um let's see how good that light will work down there all right so we got the hose clamp locked out and removed and then i used the uh radiator hose reaming tool uh if you don't have one of these i'll put a link in the description as well these things are a godsend so you just basically hook this underneath the hose and then roll it around to free it up so if it's stuck it's not hard to get it off and then just popped right off uh, it sounded like our pan did a pretty good job of catching our fluids and now I'm going to move over to these 10 mils So we got three we got one two three Right there. I'm gonna pull those out and then pop this puppy back and see what happens All right, so the furthest down 10 mil down here does not clear the transmission housing. So you just got to ride it out with the Thermostat housing the rest of these will come out um, so You also need a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench or a wrench to get that lower one because you can't fit a power ratchet in there so I suggest starting with that one and then doing these two, um, or however you want. And then there's also, look, I don't know if I can get my light down in here. If you look down in here, it looks like about a 15 millimeter is holding down the front side of this coolant pipe. Uh, flashlights are bad. The front side of this coolant pipe right here, there's a 15 millimeter down behind it. Uh, so we're going to crack that loose so we can get this whole thing free and try and move it backward. Well, got it out. You'll see here, it's not flipped back with those hoses still attached because it doesn't fit out of there with the hoses still on. So you got to use the little quick disconnect 
tools to get those two hoses off. Uh, the front one's a five eighths, the back one's a three quarters. It's always a real pain in the rear whenever you do that. But uh, if you haven't seen it, let me grab them real quick. All right, so if you've ever seen the quick disconnect tool, so basically these little plastic things, they sell them in any auto parts store. I'll also have a link in the description from Amazon for this. You pop it on the tube here and you press it up into the line that's connected on and just kind of wiggle it around. Press this towards the housing to get it to free up a lot of times. And you're basically wedging it under a clip so it can slide over this bevel here. Uh, then it will pop right off. And then to put it back on, you just click it on. Uh, putting it on is really easy. So once you get those hoses off, you can wiggle this entire assembly out. Now here's another weird thing I'm looking at GM, looking at you. Uh, you can buy the whole housing or you can buy just the thermostat. I bought just the thermostat because it's 20 bucks instead of 100. Well, look, this thermostat gets pressed up into these tabs. So we gotta compress this spring and twist it to get it out. And then to get the new one in, we're gonna have to compress it and twist it in. I haven't come up with a plan with that yet. So once I come up with a plan, I will let you know. All right, so here's what I came up with that worked really, really well. I took a one and one and one sixteenth wrench, and uh, let's see if I can stand this up right. So this was in like this, right, with those two tabs under the lip. I was able to get this perfectly on there, just depress it and rotate it. Um, popped it right out. It rides on this little shaft here, which was real grody. Uh, so I clean that off, clean the gasket mating surface. And if you look down, there's this little bevel in here. It had gasket material still on it as well. So I used brake cleaner and a paper towel and scrubbed that really well. So it's all cleaned up and ready for a reinstall. Now on the new thermostat gasket, I noticed that I think it has a sticky backing, which is pretty cool. But this one is like a metal material. And this new one is paper, which I don't like. But, you know, they've been using paper gaskets for years, so I'm sure it'll work. But, yeah, I think this thing is uh, going to go on just like that. And this is a sticky side, but the sticky side's on the wrong side. Oh, that's stupid. All right. Well, either way, let me get, I'm going to get this new thermostat in, and then I'll make a decision on how the hell I'm going to do that. So this should ride the shaft. Oh, it hasn't. Oh. Oh, that's not good. The shaft is part of the thermostat, and it just got stuck down in there. All right, let me get some vice grips. We're going to have to pull this little shaft out of here. Um, not good. Not good at all. <laughs> so hopefully I can get it out of here and get it cleaned up, because I don't want to uh, I don't want to buy a whole new thermostat housing. I'm so close. All right, the vice grips got the job done. Look at that corroded little guy. Also, my little container did not do well, if you can see. I ended up having to throw a whole lot of floor dry down. Hi, hi, hi. So, now I need to find a way to clean this little hole down here that's got corrosion in it. So, I'm going to grab a little tiny, tiny, tiny wire wheel thing or like wire stick. Uh, probably like one of the ones you use to clean battery terminals. I'll shove that down in there to knock a little of that out. All right, that little wire toothbrush did wonders. I even cleaned out that little cavity that had a tiny bit of corrosion back there. Then I just doused it with some brake fluid and blew it out with some compressed air. But we are uh, finally good for install. I mean, if you have a ton of corrosion in yours just caked in there, I would just replace the entire housing. But uh, if you just have a little bit like I did, just go ahead and clean it. Uh, totally worth the effort. Well, after further investigation, it looks like this one goes in without a rubber gasket on it, which is really weird to me. Um, the more I'm doing this, the more I'm thinking like, you should probably just buy the housing complete. It's not that much more, but if you're going this route, I'm gonna keep going. So another weird thing is no matter what, so you have this little, so the way like a thermostat works, you have this little doodadder here, and this is supposed to let air through. So if you get air stuck in there, it'll pass through and bleed out of your system. Um, it will only, typically you orientate that up, right? So the way this housing works, this would be the upward direction. But because this latches into this, it's going to be on a side no matter which way we put it. So I'm going to put it on the side that's close to the heater pipes. And that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to use this little installation tool they gave us now. And we're just going to full send this puppy and see what happens. If I got to take it back out again, I'll be real mad. And uh, O'Reilly's will hear it because that's where I got mine. Uh, but so this is going to pop down right over the top of this and then we'll press it down, press and 
Wham, bam, easy as that. That tool made that really easy to just compress it and remove it after I did the whole rinse tactic to get it out. So you'll see, actually, we... I guess it stayed orientated up towards the top. That's even weirder. Um, I guess this thing spins independent of that plate. So yeah, the closer to the top you get that air bleeder, the better. That is very close, so I'm happy with it. Um, now we're gonna go in here and pop this puppy back in. Uh, I'm going to fish, this lower bolt has to go through uh, before it gets into place because it can't fit with the transmission. So I'm gonna put that in while I fish it in. And then I'll put the get put these other two bolts in so I can hold the gasket in place because it has a sticky surface, but it's on the wrong side. So I'm gonna have to stick it to the engine block. First things first though, before I do any sort of reinstall, silly air compressor going off. Uh, we lost some coolant down here on top of the transmission housing. So I'm gonna vacuum that out with the shop vac and then I'm gonna dry it up. Then I'll clean up the surface on the block here for the new gasket, then we'll be ready to reinstall. All right, surface is cleaned up and I've got all of this coolant that was sitting on top of the transmission vacuumed out and then I dried it up with some paper towels a little bit. So. Here we go, now we gotta figure out how we're gonna go about doing this gasket here. Um, but I think I'm gonna try and put all the bolts through and fish it back into place. I'm real nervous about the sticky side though because it's really hard to get it down in there. I don't want it to stick to the block in the wrong place. I'm gonna dry it off one more time with a paper towel and then I'm gonna put the bolts through. We're gonna get it ready and just hope for the best here. Man, this was so close to being so cool, but it's just, this is silly, man. All right, so we got that surface dry. I'm gonna try to fish this in here carefully and stab it. And it's gonna be like a one and done try because of this sticky stick on gasket being on that side. Like why wouldn't they let me stick it to the housing side? It just doesn't really make much sense. But all right, here we go. I'm gonna be real careful with it. I'm probably, I'm gonna put this camera down. I cannot film this while doing this, but it's gonna be real careful to make sure I get it it's lined up as best as I can before I stab her. Well, surprisingly, I managed to wiggle it in there and I'm pretty sure I got it stabbed first try, all the bolts lined up, and then I even got this uh, 15 underneath the pipe started. So the torque spec on those three thermostat housing bolts is 10 Newton meters. Um, the very bottom one though, you can't get to without a crow's foot. So I just kind of did it by hand, honestly, but uh, it'll be fine, done that many times. So I guess at this point, I'm gonna tighten that 15 millimeter down and then we'll put everything back together. Uh, obviously these hoses, the heater hoses that we took off, you just click them back on, click, click. And then from there, it's just the foam cover and the intake, so it's not too bad. Top it off with coolant and then make sure you don't have any leaks. All right, so you can see yeah, got everything buttoned up, everything done. I don't see any puddles forming on top of the tranny, that's good. I left this cover off and buttoned up this piece here. I think I can honestly slide it in and get it in position with the uh, intake outlet in place, but if not, I'll take it back off. I don't really care, it's real easy. Um, I, what I wanna do is I wanna fire the car up. I got the radiator topped off, cooling reservoir filled, and I just wanna make sure for 100% with that weird sticky gasket that we don't have any leaks. So I'm gonna fire it up and let it run for a little bit. All right, here we go. We got it idling. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of smoke. We got some cooling on the cat, so that's just gonna have to burn off. Uh, but I don't see any leaks down here currently. I'm gonna let it go all the way till that thermostat pops. And then, uh, yeah, if there's no leaks. We will fish this puppy back down in there and get it reinstalled. Uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Just sits in there like that with a 10 mil bolt. And then it's time to test drive. Uh, if this video helps you out, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you want to see more pair videos or any of the goofy stuff we're working on, like our Bentley Turbo R.